Just over 10 years after it was found, the unique gastric brooding frog was gone from the wild. Biologists did not realise at the time that this was the very start of frog extinctions that are still continuing to this day. Some biologists believe the cause may have been pollution. Some believe that climate change is to blame. Some believe that the silent frog killer is a disease. It's got nothing to do with habitat loss or fragmentation, the standard things that all the textbooks talk about for endangerment. So something, something changed for them and it changed all of a sudden. This suddenness is the clue that a disease may be responsible. It wasn't until the 1990s that the evidence increasingly indicated a fungal disease known as chytrid. Frogs are really different from humans in that most of them breathe across their skin. So they need a, a healthy, intact, moist skin to get oxygen, to do gas exchange, to get enough water. And so the minute the fungus completely fills the skin of a frog, there's a, a change in the chemistry in the blood that affects their heart, and they have, to some degree, something like a, a heart attack. When chytrid infects a frog, it spreads quickly, like an invasive cancer. The fungus uses the frog to reproduce and then leaves the frog to die. We found hundreds of dead frogs. Every day there was more dead frogs. Frogs were falling out of the canopy, sick, dead or dying. Frogs were coming up out of burrows, bubbling up out of the ground that, again, were sick and dying. One thing that we've never been able to do is make a new species. That's the product of evolution. And when we lose one of those little elements of evolution, it's gone forever. And that's a sadder thing. To me, it's, a, it's an emotional issue. It's, it's, a, it's about a morality of nature and, and what we do. The consequences of what the Lazarus team are trying to achieve will have a profound impact. John Shine already sees how Lazarus will play a role in the future. We will gain enormous amounts of knowledge in the process, and that knowledge, from my perspective, will be very important in how we tackle things like Alzheimer's and cancer and heart disease in the future, because it's all about what makes cells work. There are many biologists and scientists who worry about what may be lost with the current extinction of frogs. Jeffrey Bonner of the St. Louis Zoo in the USA shares John Shine's concerns. Oh, take a virus like HIV. We tested 14 different frogs and found out that a third of them produced a peptide, a substance on their skin, that completely inhibited the transmission of HIV cells, virus cells, from dendritic to T cells. In other words, they stopped the transmission of HIV. One of my favorite medical examples is the potential for frogs to stop the absorption of nutrients. The best example would be gastric brooders. These were frogs that swallowed their young, and then the young produced a substance that shut down mom's digestive tract. That's pretty amazing, because those frogs could have held the key to the treatment of obesity, which has so many implications for so many different health-related problems. Uh, unfortunately, there are no gastric brooders left. 